Hello, welcome to the Eddie B Unplugged Podcast. This will probably be my first video. Uh, I just wanted to always have a podcast. Uh, You're probably saying like, wow, great, another podcast. Well, you know, the thing is this. My perspective comes from a 55-year-old man who grew up on the southeast side of Chicago. So my perspective will be unique to my age group. My perspective will be unique to uh, the the area that I'm from. Like for instance, uh, I'm a Chicago Cubs fan. I come, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. To be a Cub fan on the south side of Chicago, some people would say like, like what's wrong with you? Well, because the White Sox are from the south side and the Cubs are from the north side. Well, it doesn't say the south side Chicago Cubs. It doesn't say the south side White Sox. It's just the White Sox and the Chicago Cubs. And uh, based on that that instance, the reason I would be a Cub fan is because of, uh, as a young child watching WGN uh, Channel 9, the Superstation back in the day, they always broadcast White Sox games. I mean, Chicago Cub games. And it was more uh, of a challenge to see a White Sox game than it was a Cub game. So... Every day after school, you could come home and and there'd be a, the 120 game. If it started, if the Cubs started at 120, by the time you got home, you were always catching them in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning, and uh, you know, you just, you just, how can I say, you just became a Cub fan because you were exposed to more Cubs baseball than I see White Sox fans. A lot of my White Sox fan friends. They said that they went to a lot of games as a youngster. My father didn't really take us to a lot of ball games. And the ball games that he did take us to were primarily Cub games. And uh, growing up in the late 70s, early 80s, or all of the 80s, the Cubs weren't that good. They, they didn't they didn't really turn around until, I'd say, they didn't become something to really start watching until 1984. And even then, you got to figure that's when they... They, they had a great team, the 84 Cubs, and they, they got to the playoffs, and they ended up losing uh, in the playoffs to San Diego. It was heartbreaking. But the point is that I was already – I had followed that season religiously. I was a diehard Cub fan on uh, based, of, uh, based on 1984. I had started watching them – I had – I'd say at that age, in the in the late seventies, they were on the radar for me because they'd be on TV a lot. I'd see them. I didn't know I was a Cub fan yet. I just knew I liked them, but I didn't really become a Cub fan until I'd say uh, nineteen eighty two, eighty three, right around that window. Because uh, my mother was ill during those years, and sometimes we'd go out, go to the beach, come back at night. My mom would be would have the games on. And, and we'd just sit there, snuggle up with my mother, and, and watch the baseball games. And it, it was something she seemed interested in. And as uh, her son or her child, I gravitated towards the baseball because of her on that aspect. And uh, 84 comes around, and that's that's a great year. Cubs are, Cubs are doing really well. They traded Mel Hall to get Rick Sutcliffe. They had a bunch of different players. They had Gary Matthews, the Sarge, they had Bobby Denier, the center fielder. These guys were all acquired through trades with the Phillies. He had Ron Say who came from the Dodgers and and he had a pedigree of winning and so did the Sarge and so did Bobby Denier. And we had you know, we had uh Leon Durham who had taken over the first base. Jody Davis was our catcher. Keith Moreland was a, a right fielder. Again, Bobby De Niro was our center fielder, and the Sarge was our, our our left fielder, and that team just really came together. Even Ryan Sandberg was a rookie that year. Oh, he was no, he was a rookie from the previous year, but uh, he really he really took hold of uh, the imagination of of the baseball world, especially with the famous Sandberg game. That's coming up on forty years uh, from that first from from that game. And I was able to witness it the first time and consequently throughout the years after that, you know, from watching replays and uh, the Cub Cub fandom talking about it. Uh, 
I've been, I was, I've been a Cub fan. I've seen them with no lights, and I've seen them have the lights. And and then what happened is, uh, that's my birthday actually is August eighth. So August eighth, nineteen eighty eight, that was the big premiere of the lights. But on that day, there was a a, a big storm, a rainstorm, and 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 everything got pushed back a couple days, but. That was pretty big. That was a pretty big day in Cub history. And like I said, from that point on, the team became a lot more up and down. You know, they they do really well, then they then then they'd go on a couple years where they weren't that good. Then you had the emergence of Sammy Sosa, and that was a big deal. And then you know you had 2003, and then of course it all leads up to 2016, which was the game changer. We won the World Series. We won it all. There's a lot of history in between, I want to say 1984 to 2016, but for the most part, me being a Cub fan, living on the southeast side of Chicago was because of was because of uh, WGN and then the exposure that I had going to games and just uh, you know becoming becoming a fan, a diehard fan, which I really am. I I listen to various podcasts. I constantly keep up on who's being traded, who's being, you know, let go. All that stuff there really enthralls me. I can even give you, I watch baseball so much, and Cub baseball so much, I can give you my own personal analysis on it. So those are some of the things that in this podcast I wouldn't have a problem discussing. I wouldn't have a problem discussing music, uh, sharing some of my hobbies. I'm a, I'm a big jukebox collector, big ju- jukebox fan, and um, I have several jukeboxes. And I, I could talk about that for days, for hours. You know, I, besides the music collection that I have, besides the stereo collection that I have, jukeboxes is something that really grabs my attention. And the thing is that. When you're starting a podcast, you're still trying to develop your voice. You're still trying to develop the space that you want to uh, be a part of. And this is this is where I would say that I'm not there yet. I I I don't know where my conversations will lead me. I don't know the kind of guests that I'll have on my podcast. But I know that I wanted to 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 create a, a, a online presence and have a podcast. Simply as a sounding board, maybe something that I, things, uh, anecdotes I'd like to share, stories of my past, words of wisdom, words of encouragement. I think a lot of times, a lot of us are starved for a one-on-one conversation with somebody that that's, that 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 you can connect with, somebody that you can understand. And and even though I'm a stranger, I'm a stranger to all of you. Maybe through this podcast we can develop a rapport, a connection, and maybe I can share information or share things about myself that will connect with you and and keep you interested and keep you enthralled. And all I can say is that for me this is a new, new thing, a new adventure for me. And I always talked about it, I always thought about it, but I never took action. And 2024... Is is this is January 2024, and I'm at that point now where I said, well, I gotta I gotta start taking action on things that I haven't taken action on. So in the last year or in the last month, I started tackling a lot of things that I had procrastinated on, and I just started facing things head on. And I think that that's that's what people need to do. When you feel indecisive and when you don't have the direction that you need. Sometimes you just got to create a direction. You got to move in a direction. And once you're on that path and once you're on that journey, the path will, will find you. And the thing is that that's what I'm hoping to accomplish with my with my podcast. It, to me it's just a creative outlet. And this is something that I'm 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 going to like right now, I'm using my computer to to videotape this, or not. See, that's another that's another thing I like to talk about. There's no videotaping anymore. That's something of a long lost era. Now I'm digitally digitally 
capturing my image to to dis disseminate to procure to to you know to distribute so i think what i'm going to do since i'm in a learning curve i am going to take this video and i'm going to take it i'm going to upload it to another software i'm going to probably put a little intro in there i don't know uh edit put some music on and make this video a little more a little more crisper a little more cleaner a little more you know presentable so like i said this is my inaugural podcast i'm eddie v i'm just a, a regular guy from the southeast side of chicago well now i live on the north northern part of indiana north uh north part of indiana and uh i mean i lived in chicago like all of my life for, until the last uh, 13 years so I'll always consider myself a Chicagoan, and uh, I'm not even a minute away from the border to Chicago. So, in my mind, I'm still a Chicago person. Uh, that's never going to change. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully, I can uh, put a voice out there and 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 create some kind of dialogue with an audience, and uh, we'll see where it takes us from there. So I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye.